Coffee on a Tuesday and Vlog 26. I'm back, baby! <laughs> In the spring of 1818, the poet John Keats wrote a letter to his friend John Hamilton Reynolds which contained in it a poetic metaphor for how he saw human life. He called it the mansion of many apartments and the image goes sort of like this. The first apartment we step into he calls the thoughtless chamber. Here we remain for as long as we do not think. Now I think Keats means by this thinking deeply philosophically, poetically, etc. And the whole time we're in this chamber, this apartment, the door to the next apartment is wide open, showing a bright appearance on the other side. Now, at first, maybe we have no motivation to move toward it, but slowly, eventually, the thinking principle impels us to, and we go in. Now, once we get inside, into the second chamber, which Keats calls the chamber of maiden thought, we become intoxicated by the light and atmosphere. We see nothing but pleasant wonders and think of delaying there forever in delight. In other words, we get a taste of the ideal. Then the mood changes. One of the effects of sharpening one's mind in the chamber of maiden thought is that one begins to see deeper into the heart of man, into the misery, pain, sickness, and oppression that the world is full of. These things gradually begin to darken the chamber, fill it with the fog, but at the same time that it gets dark, on all sides of the room, doors are set open, leading away to dark passages, which it then becomes one's choice to take or not take. You can see that even in a letter, Keats's powers of description are extraordinary. He later coined the term negative capability, a concept to describe an artist who, understanding the inherent mysteries of life, could find the strength to remain, to be, in uncertainties, mysteries, doubts, without any irritable reaching after fact and reason. He cited Shakespeare as a key example of an artist who had achieved this. In 1819, a year after the letter to John Reynolds, Keats writes his Ode to a Nightingale, one of his best works, indeed one of the best works of poetry, in my opinion. Eight stanzas long, the poem tells of the narrator's reaction to hearing the song of a nightingale, the bird being representative of the ideal, and his profound longing to join it, even at the expense of his life. The poem starts with the narrator becoming paralyzed by the bird song, which commences a journey through the layers of his soul. Now, in a minute, I'm just going to put a link up here, probably right here, to another video where I'll recite the poem for you, um, because poems like this should be heard. And in the corner, somewhere in one of these corners, I'm going to put um, numbers corresponding to the stanza so that you'll have a signpost um, as, as we go along. Try to keep in mind the metaphor of the mansion of many apartments and the concept of negative capability while I'm reading it. Also, it might be worthwhile to say that the general rule with art is that you can have any feeling about it that you damn well please, but whatever you like, whatever you know you fancy in terms of art. It's good to memorize poems. I highly recommend it. And if you want to memorize one of your favorite poems and, and recite it and post it as a video response, I will most certainly put it up on the video. Um, so the link should be there now. Maybe here, I don't know. Click, click on it. Ode to a Nightingale by John Keats. Click here, right here, right here. My face is now the link. It's a good poem. I promise. You have to believe me. You have to believe me. Please believe me. Please believe me. <laughs> have you clicked yet? 